Hello, I think the uh, Simple Rockets 2 intro tutorials are pretty good, but they left some things out, especially when people get to the low orbit mission. Seems like there's a few things that just aren't covered that really should be. The basic spaceship has the command pod on it. The command pod is, is kind of heavy. When you're doing this mission, they don't give you a lot of fuel. So it, that thousand kilograms on the uh, command pod is pretty heavy payload for the limited fuel they give you. You can't delete the command pod typically. You hit the delete key, it says you can't delete the primary command pod. So you have to go get a command chip. That's in the gizmos down here. So go ahead and stick it on top of the stack. That'll get the orientation right. It needs to be facing up. And then you need to go into the properties and, well, I didn't select it, there you go. So now you have to set primary on the command chip. Now you'll be able to remove the rest of the, the spaceship, any of the other parts. Make sure it stays in this orientation, facing upward, otherwise you're not gonna be able to fly your ship because the, all, the, all the directions will be confused. So now you can add parts to this. And uh, I'm just gonna put a fuel tank on here. Just as an example, I went ahead and built a, a ship to do the mission before. So here's the ship that I built. Really simple rocket. I'm going to go ahead and select the mission here for low orbit. Here's the rocket that I built. Uh, simple two stage. The command pod is, or command chip is underneath the nose cone there. You see the orientation is right. And uh, that button changes. You can't, but it is set to primary. That's the primary component. The fuel, this fuel tank, I've got a thousand kilograms of RP-1. That's for the upper stage with the Pixie engine. In the lower stage, you've got 9,000 kilograms of, of RP-1. So total, we, we're given 10,000 kiloliters of RP-1. So I'm just a little bit confused about how they're counting the mass of the fuel and the volume of the fuel, and they're not showing me oxidizer. So. I plan on burning about 10,000 kilograms of fuel in oxidizer here, because that's the mass that it's showing me in the editor. Uh, and the limit we have is 10,000 liters. When I run this mission, my delta in mass from liftoff to final orbit is about 11,000 kilograms. And they're telling me that's like 9,000 liters of fuel. I guess the last thousand kilograms is the dry weight, the motor and the interstage and structure like that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this and show you how the sequence goes. Uh, I use the mage engine as the first stage engine. It's got plenty, plenty of thrust for this. You can hit enter to engage the automatic tracking. If you don't move it, I'm going to turn on some parameters here so we can see the flight parameters and launch it with full throttle. If you don't hit enter, I don't know if it'll track vertically, but if you move the uh, carrot for pitch, it'll start tracking. That's something you might want to turn off with the enter key if you have like RCS and you don't want to waste amount of propellant. That's kind of a later thing. So I'm going to gradually pitch over here, starting at a thousand meters. I also throttle down to about half throttle at a thousand meters. When you get up, I, I get up, I kind of have my nodes here at like 5,000. I uh, pitch over a little bit more, throttle up a little bit. Next, my next node is, these are just kind of arbitrary. This is just for my own convenience, but I think I wait till like 15,000 meters. Yeah, 15,000 meters is typically where I pitch over to kind of 45. So I'll, you know, step over there a little bit at a time. If you put in big changes, uh, the rocket kind of oscillates around. I think that wastes some fuel, I don't know. If, you, if it was a flexible structure, it could put oscillations on the structure. And I don't think this game models that. I think it treats the rocket as a solid object, but maybe in later versions they'll, they'll put in some physics. And you want to do gradual transitions. So this is my first burn. I, I, I've been doing two burns on this. Um, so the first burn, I'm looking for an apoapsis of about 75, 80,000 kilometers or <laughs> meters, uh, 75 or 80 kilometers. So I turn off the motor there with the X key. Uh, you may have also noticed I clicked on the, the 
prograde carrot that the green arrow to make it track prograde here we're up in the thinner atmosphere so i turn the full throttle back on burn off the rest of our, our fuel on the first stage i'm going to pitch over a little bit more here by the way we lose uh control here the the command pod that's default has cmgs like uh, control moment gyros in it uh, but the command ship does not have that so <laughs> At this point, the only control we have is when we have thrust on, and it's using thrust vectoring. So here I'm, I'm tumbling a little bit, uh, kind of out of control, but it, it doesn't matter too much. When we get to the next, uh, when we get to the apoapsis and I circularize the orbit, I'm going to, you know, the thrust vectoring is going to point me in the right direction, so I don't have to worry too much. I'm going to turn on a little bit more verbose notifications here and, and show you the, the orbit parameters. I said for notifications, I mean the annotations are a little bit more verbose. I like to know what's going on. And you can see my cone there, the little blue cone uh, shows I'm tumbling around uh, out of control. <laughs> I could put RCS thrusters on. I hope that they add a gizmo in the future to uh, for CMGs on satellites that, that don't have a command pod. But there's a lot to be added to this game. I'm really hopeful that the devs add a lot more to this game so, yeah at this point i'm just waiting for the circularization burn and i, I want to do that maybe with 20 30 seconds left before apoapsis so i have enough time to make the burn before i start falling back down towards the planet I use a little bit of thrust there just to get it aligned to the prograde vector get it under control counting down here we go so i'll um full thrust in the prograde direction and you can see my my orbit growing there and it'll grow and grow and grow if you click on the planet you can center the view on the planet and that'll I, don't know, I just like that a little bit better when we're looking at orbits so you can see my impact position there moving east eventually it's going to go out outside of the planet and it'll become a, a periapsis point, the lowest point in the orbit, and then that needs to get up and out of the atmosphere at something more than 100 kilometers, and there we go. That's success for the low orbit. Not the most circular of orbits, uh, I'm not all that proud of it, but that's how you do it. So thanks for watching. Let me know if this helped you out. Kind of new to YouTube, actually making things for YouTube, so let me know if, this, uh, if there's anything I can do to improve it.